Hi everybody, this is Debbie you know, from Teacher Success Coach. I hope that you guys are well. Right, um, there are a number of things I want to talk about. And um, as a teacher, there have been a number of things that's been coming into my radar. One of them is expectation and one of them is fear. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is expectation linking it and connecting to parents. Some parents have very high expectation of the children. They set high expectation of the children, yet still they do not expect the children to, to meet those high expectations. And when the children meet those high expectations, they're demonstrating surprise. Oh, you got an A. Oh, you got a B. You know, so they're setting this high expectation, but yet still, when the child actually achieve it, they're not satisfied. They're saying, oh, and by the way, this child have achieved X, Y, Z. So it is quite sad. And it is also frustrating for the child because the child is left in confusion. Because on one hand, you set high expectation and that you want me to achieve it. Well, that's what I thought as a child. But well, yes, still, when I have achieved it, you are slightly, let's say it's like a disappointment in a way. Because you are setting the high expectation. And when I achieve it, you don't expect me to achieve it. So when you're discussing it, it's like a by the way situation. Right? So in that case, that parent is giving the child conflicting information. And the child doesn't know where they stand. Because... Yes, you tell me I want you want me to achieve this because you keep on going on about my achievement, etc. What you want me to achieve. And on the other hand, when I achieve it, you sung in surprised as if you did not expect me to achieve it. So this is something parents need to be very clear as to when they set high expectation to the children for the children, you must expect them to achieve it. You cannot set high expectation and when they achieve it, one aspect of you saying that. Oh, well, they've achieved it anyway. Really? That's conflicting. And that is also regarding, I'm going to connect this to school as well. Because I'm in a school where, um, in terms of, I'm very careful, I'm just trying to think what I'm saying. I'm in a school that is in a deprived area. And as much as on one hand, some teachers expect the children to achieve on the other hand they do they do not have high expectation of those children and i find it very very frustrating because i've been in a number of schools where i see that happen whereby depending upon the area which the children which the school is is um, located there are very low expectation of the children because the teachers do not expect the children to achieve and that irritates me quite a lot because I feel as educators, we must believe in our, in our students. We must have a high expectation of the children because if we do not believe in those children, what do we expect from them? The more you, you believe in the students you teach and in your child, the more you are going to get out of them because the higher expectation you have of them, the more you are going to see because they're willing to please you, to show you that, yes, you believe in me and I'm going to do my best. It is so important. And irrespective of where you are teaching or where your children are, you need to have high expectation of them. It is so very, very important. And in a number of schools I've taught in, especially in schools in the private area, when I'm demonstrating high expectation of the children or my expectation of the children, they're kind of a surprise because they're saying to me, Miss, nobody have ever said that to me or nobody believe in me. It makes me very, very sad because sometimes it makes me very, very emotional because I feel as parents and as teachers, we must have high expectation because if we don't, who would? Another area I want to talk about is parents and school 
building up fear of failure in children. Schools are building up fear in children and parents are also building up fear in children. And what I've experienced over the number of years I've been teaching, I've been teaching a lot of years. And in the last six years, I've actually gone into schools because I've done the university and I've done the colleges, etc. And community center, etc., etc. So I've gone back into schools. And what I'm beginning to see is the schools building up fear in the children and the parents also doing the same. As a result of this fear, the children are afraid to take chances and they're afraid to take, they're afraid to make choices because the fear of making choices, it also instill in them. If they make, if they make, if they take, if they um, the choice they've given, if they make certain choice, they feel that it might be the wrong choice. So they are afraid of making of making choices because they are afraid of failing. But as I say to students all the time, when you make choices, you are not failing if it's not the right choice at the time. You it it teaches you that this is not the right choice at this time. So therefore, you make another choice. It's okay, and it's not a failure. At that that choice at that time was not right for that time. It's okay. So you go back and make another choice. That's not a problem. The interesting thing about it as well, we also need to start defining what success is. Because when you're actually instilling children, when parents and schools are instilling in children or young people the fear of failure, the fear of taking, of making choices. It also means that they are constantly seeking approval for doing anything. So it also takes away from their independence and their confidence because everything they want to do, they're constantly seeking your approval as a parent or your approval as a teacher. And every single thing they do, they seek in approval. I've got one student who every single thing she does, you know, it's like she's seeking approval for everything because she's afraid of taking chance. She's afraid of stepping out of her comfort zone. She is afraid of making mistakes. So she wants you to, to support her in doing that. For example, I would say to her, I say, okay, choose one and she'll say to me sorry miss i can't choose why can't you choose i don't know miss i said no i want you to make a choice and up to today these students have not taken have not made a choice it doesn't matter what is it i'm saying to her it could be two books and i'm saying to her choose one she's not choosing because she doesn't know which one to choose because her parents have instilled so much fear into her that she's afraid to take chances and she's afraid of making a choice. In the same way the school have instilled so much fear in that child, that young person, that she is afraid to make a decision. And it's quite sad because that is factor that is keeping her back. And these are factors that's keeping young people back because fear of stepping out because they're going to do the wrong thing. It's okay to do the wrong. It doesn't matter. There's no right and wrong answers, as I keep saying. It doesn't matter. Go for it. And if that's not the right choice at that time, it's okay. You make another choice. And if that's the wrong choice, you make another one. But that's not failing either. It's just saying to you at that time, that choice wasn't right. So hold on to that would pack it for a while and maybe in the future you're going to go back to it. So those are the things we need to empower young people with. That it is okay to take chances. It's okay to fail. It's okay to make choices. It doesn't matter. We need to redefine what success is for some of these young people. <clears throat> Sorry, because success isn't always in terms of 
a, a you know a succeeding or a getting it right that these are things we need to say to young people this actually bring me to another topic well you know it's the same topic but moving on a little bit as you guys know i'm a mentor to young people so i mentor young people in an organization i do voluntary in and um one of the things we did this morning sorry one of the things we did this morning was we did a vision board and i connected with success in school so using the vision board as a vehicle to demonstrate how you can be successful in school however i need to redefine success because success doesn't mean that you you get it right or it's a it's a it's a vehicle to going on to university etc success means different things to different people you would have someone that is um a, a teaching assistant he or she is not the teacher but they're a teaching assistant and they're very successful in what they do the teacher is also very successful in what he or she does so for those two individuals success means different things and success look differently to both of them so when i was actually going going around the room this morning with my young people because the primary school children young people and i was trying to say to them okay i want us all to do a vision board and i want you all to put on the vision board goal for six months for, sorry sorry goal for six weeks so i wanted them to identify a goal which connects with school so that they could achieve it in six weeks and then i go around the, the um the room asking them to identify what success meant to them it saddened me that there was so programming into what success meant and what success ought to be that i had to go back and unpack that and demonstrate to them no 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 success is like this for one group of people it may not be for someone else but let me just go through this i said to them okay explain to me what success is to you and how you see success one child said to me and then i say you could connect it to school one child one child or young person said to me success is doing very good at school getting the gcses top gcse grades a level grades going to university getting your degree possibly doing a master and getting a good job that was success means to that child i then had to say to him yes this is fantastic this is what success means for some people but let's say a, a, a road sweeper or someone who is in doing let's say someone working in a supermarket for them success means something different for them success means oh they're enjoying what they're doing and they're getting fun out of it they're helping someone who trying to do the shopping they're helping someone to make choices to select what they like for them that's success and for someone who is the road sweeper for him or her success is meeting different people on the road and talking to them that makes the day and they're actually seeing that the road is clean whether you know wherever they the patch is for them that is success so we need to remember for every individual success looks very differently and mean very different thing to them so because they don't want what you want that does not necessarily mean that they are unsuccessful for me success is my success on a daily basis is not whether or not the the child in my um <coughs> my care have actually um got a high school my success is that students who i'm teaching have understood the topic that i've just taught them and when they leave my lesson they're taking away what they've understood that is my big aha moment and my success for the day not whether or not that student wrote a a star 
essay. That's not my success at all. My success is the child that was struggling to understand um, functionalist theory or struggling to understand what the role of the family is or struggling to understand the, um, the definition of the nuclear family and that child understand it. That is my success. Not necessarily the child has done the essay and got an A star. Yes, that is a success for me as well. But they both are successes, but on different, on different wavelengths. And they mean different things to those two students. So the student who've just understood the functionalist perspective, that's that child's success. Whereas the child who've done the A star essay, that's that child's success. So, as I said, for different people, success looks differently and means different things. So, you should not measure individual success on your success because that person may not want what you want. It's like today, for that child, that was how that child saw success. For another child, that child didn't see success like that. The child see that I want to do an apprenticeship and I want to work in the field while studying, for that child, that's, that's, that's their success. So, what I want to leave you guys with, success means different things to different people. So you should not measure your success against someone else and say, well, they need to be using your mirror to identify their success. It doesn't work like that. Whatever an individual see as successful for them, we need to celebrate it. Because guess what? We are all unique individual and we all have various unique and special gifts. So it is very important that we celebrate individual successes. It doesn't matter what it looks like to you. Whatever it looks like to them, we need to celebrate it. Anyway, guys, take care, stay blessed. Have a fantastic evening, night, morning, where you are. Thank you for watching. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.